Hello everyone, my name is Mr. N Jersey and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are back with some more changes to the experimental branch and to the new modular engines. And this is quite a big change here. But before we get started, if you are enjoying my videos, don't forget that like and subscribe button and ring the little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. And while you're watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and what else you'd like to see in my future videos. So I said, let's get straight into it and get started with this week's video. So we're back again with some more updates to the new modular engines and to the experimental branch here in Stormworks version one. Now devs yesterday went and added a few new features to these modular engines. So we're going to be covering that in this video. Now the biggest thing that they've gone and added is more control to how these modular engines work. The first one here that is gonna be a big change is going to be the new stoichiometrics for these engines. This pretty much allows you to control how much fuel and also how much air is going through into your engine, obviously resulting in either a better efficiency, lower efficiency, and either better RPS or lower RPS with those engines. Now, what they've gone and done to achieve this is they've gone and split out the air and fuel intakes for the engines, the actual manifold intake. So you can see here, just on my left, we have the new two components. So we have one for air and one for fuel, so it's completely split out. That means you can control how much throttle you're giving it, meaning how much fuel, how much air is actually going into these engines here. They've also added a temperature sensor, so you can get the temperature sensor a temperature out of these modular engines. Of course, that is quite useful, so it's nice to see. And also, they now actually produced exhaust, which is a brand new thing here. They've never done that before, so that's pretty cool that they have exhaust particles coming out the engines. Now, with these, pretty much what happens is if you go and walk over to any of these engines, you'll see that if you go over to any of the cylinders, you can see we have the air slash fuel ratio. We also have the stoichiometric, we have the efficiency, and we also have the manifold, okay? Now, depending on those factors, you can get better efficiency or worse efficiency, okay? Another thing the devs have also mentioned here is that if you're running from a cold start, you need a richer intake. Now, with the stoichiometric here, you can see that currently it's on one. This will actually move from negative one to one, okay? So it, it has that range. Ideally, you want it at zero. Okay, that is the best possible solution here. Now, if it's at one, it means the engine is too rich. And if it has negative one, it means it is too lean. Okay, so you can change your air fuel mixture here. Now, the nice thing is that with these new heads is you can actually control that using the simple dial. And you'll notice here, I've just gone and quickly gone and put some throttles here. And we're going to go and build or finish building this engine. And we're going to get it up and running for the first time. Now, one thing I have noticed is if you are hovering over here, the air fuel mixture, I find roughly around 13 plus minus is the best bet. Now, what I would like to see here in the future is some way to read that data out. So you can maybe have a node on it so you can pull that data out. That way we can create these like microprocessors that can maybe automatically, like, you know, tune the engine for us instead of us manually having to go over to the throttles because there is no way of us getting any data out of this engine. The only data we can pull out is the temperature and also is going to be the RPS. So I'd like to see some way of pulling that information out in the future, but at the moment we can carry on with this. I can actually just look here. We've nice to see that you can look, look inside these manifolds. Okay, let's go and build these engines. So as you can see here, we're just going to go and get the air. I've just gone and simply connected the engine here. There is no cooling on it. There's nothing else, but uh, we're just going to go and test it out and see how it works. So that's going to be our air. We also have fuel over here. So I'm going to put that in. For the air intake, I'm just using a fluid port. And then for the fuel, I'm just going to go and get a simple tank. And I'm going to go and put the tank on top here. So I'm just going to go and rotate it like so. So we've got our air and we've got our fuel. And the cool thing is if you go into the logic here, you'll notice that we have throttles on the air and the fuel here. So we're going to go and connect this up. So we're going to go fuel to fuel, air to air. Everything else is connected on here. All the electricity is done. I don't need to do anything else. Now, if you go over once we've got this spawned in, you'll notice that nothing actually changes. Everything is still the same. It's still zero and it's still one on the stoichiometric. Okay. But the thing is nice that if you go left, for example, let's go and increase our air, increase our fuel, put our clutch. Okay. So we're getting power out. 
Okay, you'll see once again, nothing changes until you go and press your starter. As soon as we press our starter, our RPS is trying to go up a little bit. And you'll notice here that we have our fuel air mixtures currently 5.9 and the stoichiometric is one, which means it's too rich. Okay, so you'll notice here that if we go and slowly go and move here, so I'm gonna keep holding the starter. Let's bring our air up. You can see our fuel air mixture is currently nine. Let's keep on bringing our air up. And you can see, oh, look, there we go, negative 0.03, which means it's too lean now. So if we go and bring the air down a bit and stop pressing my starter because my engine is actually running now, which is pretty cool. You can now see we're at 0.04, which is almost perfect. OK, and you can see the engine is running really quite nice. We can adjust this if need be so we can maybe get a little bit less air. And now we're at 0.13, a little bit less. 0.23 so maybe a little more air and 0.05 and we have a fuel mixture ratio of 14 to 14.2 okay so you can see air is currently 0.86 and our fuel is 0.3 okay so you can play around with these and for example if we were to go and let's just go and try and see if we can cut this engine so crankshaft is going down Clutch, let's leave the clutch on. Okay, and we'll wait for that to drop down a little bit. Okay, and let's go now and see if we can get it started up. You can see now it's still too rich, so we need to give it some more air. So more air. Okay, now it's too lean, so let's give it some more fuel. Okay, 0.91, which means we actually should be up and running nearly. Let's see if we can get that a little better. So that's too rich. Bring it down 0.22. That looks perfect, actually. Make sure our start is on. Great. There we go. And you can see now we're running at about 13.6 there, which is nice. We're running on what? Throttle 0.61 and 0.22 here. Okay. So yeah, you can play around with these. Um, you can still see that cooling doesn't really have any effect on these engines at the moment. Uh, hence the reason why I haven't put any cooling here or any of that on. But yeah, it's pretty cool that you can play around with this. I am slightly concerned that newer players will have a little bit of a hard time trying to figure that out. But at the same time, it's cool. It gives you better control over these engines. Uh, and I'm happy to see this as long as we have a simpler option. For people to put in their equations because you can imagine that if we do get rid of the old engines and we just go only to modular this might be a little bit challenging but it's still cool to see that they've gone at this and you can play around with this as i said this is a very very basic setup if you guys want to copy it you can pretty much it's just exhaust going out the back here and then we've got the air and the fuel going into one and then splitting down into this v8 engine which is four cylinders on each side here and a simple starter and a drive belt um but yeah that's pretty much about it for the changes here on experimental as always i'd love to hear your comments in the video description below let me know what you guys think of this new way of controlling your engines and you know manipulating it and tuning it uh, to get the best fuel efficiency and so on and so forth let me know in the comments below and as always i hope you have enjoyed this and found us maintaining and informative as always and we'll see you in the next one